so I don't think anyone is here yet. I haven't had any notifications. So we'll just wait a couple of seconds and I will get going because um, I did say 7.30 and I know people do watch this at a later stage. But I do, I will welcome everybody. And um, this Wednesday, we are two weeks into uh, self-isolation or having to stay in our bubble. Um, it's gone quite fast, I think. Um, I guess maybe for some others it hasn't, but um, I've still had plenty to do and my day is going quite fast. So we will be starting week three. Um, I did have to go out the other day to go to the shops and it's so interesting how many people are not um, are not adhering to the staying at home people driving here and there and stopping at places and whatnot uh, it just if everyone just stuck to it obviously it would be over a lot quicker but I do hope everyone is well and are looking after themselves managing to get some crafting done because crafting is known to be very good for your health so another reason to be um, doing crafting so today I wanted to share with you something else from the ornate garden suite I know we did something last week and it's really funny actually because I had this card ready to do and then yesterday we had a Facebook live team meeting from um, my leader, um, team leader Jackie and she did a very similar card and we both got inspired by Tammy Wilson. So it was really um, interesting but I thought I would go ahead and do mine anyway and I will show you the card that um, Jackie did and we will go from there. So I really do hope you enjoy. Please make comments, etc. I probably won't see them while I am crafting, and, but I will reply afterwards. Um, and just for those who don't know me, I should probably introduce myself. That always helps. I'm Karen from stampingbees.co.nz, independent stamping up demonstrator. So let's get going. So always this awkward moment, but won't be a second. So I'm just gonna flip that over. Move that over to there and try and do it as smooth as I can. Just put a bit of light on the on the show. Okay. All right. Whoops. That's not going to be very helpful. Move that up a little bit so you can see it and it gets out of the shadow. Now I just rearranged my lights a little bit and I don't know, I think it's a little bit dark there to be honest. So I will just try and bring them down a little bit. Um, hopefully that is going to help. That's looking better already I must admit. I, did, I broke a lamp, unfortunately, broke one of my bulbs. And of course, at the moment, it is not possible to get a replacement of anything. So I've just had to make do with other things that I do have. I might pop that on as well, just in case that helps. So I do apologise if it is a little bit dark. It shouldn't be. So I have written down here the measurements for the card. And it is basically um, Thick Whisper White. always use this for my base. As I've said, it is great for giving a really good stable base for the card. I have also used gold foil. Now I have cut this piece with using the, the uh, ornate layers dies. Aren't these just beautiful? Look at that. I mean, just gorgeous. I never know which one to use. They're just all so beautiful. But I've used this largest one here. Uh, I've cut it out with one of the uh, rectangular stitch dies, just so that I haven't wasted the middle piece. And I have used that for something else and for the sentiment. And... The stamp sets will be using, 
Oh, I'll just show you the stitched. I mean, I use these all the time. These are fantastic. So many, so many sizes in this set. And this is the rectangle stitched framelit dies. Lots. So we've used the second to largest one for this. And I have used this beautiful gold embossed paper and use that second to largest die. So I have written down the sizes. In case you don't have these dies, you can uh, cut this out. It's 13 and a half by 9.7. And this is, now I didn't write that down, but I can measure it for you right now. This is, that's inches, eight and a half by 12. That's easy, isn't it? Eight and a half by 12. I'll write that down. Eight and a half centimetres. And of course the pen's not working now. By 12. Oh my goodness. There we go. Centimetres. Well, I don't know what's happened to that, but it's alright. You can see the 12. And I have used a scrap of the gold for the sentiment. Now we will stamp that to start off with because I will be using stays on and I like to always give that a little bit of time to dry before I touch it or do anything with it. So I have used the stamp from this beautiful stamp set. Just love all the font and all the sayings in this stamp set. You've got the large thank you, so grateful and thanks, but you've also got these gorgeous little sentiments as well, just like they've been handwritten. So we're going to be using Your Amazing. And I'm just going to stamp that on there. And... So stays on is great for a slippery, you can either emboss with some black embossing powder or use your stays on. But stays on just takes a little bit longer to dry. So it's always a good idea just to do it a little bit ahead of time. So I'll pop that up there. Mm, I do love the armady smell of stays on. I know some people don't like it, but I actually quite like the smell. So I'll pop that over there. Now, I'll just show you, actually, before we start on this one. This is, I don't know if you've seen the one that Tammy Wilson did. She is an artisan in the artisan design team. It was beautiful, and it just really struck me, and obviously has struck other people as well. So this is the one that uh, Jackie created yesterday for our team meeting. So very gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. Just love all the texture and the layers, which is what I seem to like to do as well. Um... So that was Jackie's one. So today I'm just going to do things a little bit different. I wanted to just add a bit of brayed colour to this. And I have just used Rococo Rose. And, oh, hi, Helen. Welcome. Lovely to see someone here. <laughs> So when you are, I shouldn't do that off screen, you can't really see what I'm doing. So when you are inking up your brayer, you always go in one direction to ink up your brayer. But when you're actually placing the colour on, you can go backwards and forwards. Basically, you just go one way on the ink pad so that you get an even covering of the ink on the brayer. So you start off, you just light, just running it backwards and forwards. So you can go as deep a colour as you would like, or as light as you like. It's always good, as I always say, start off light and then increase the colour as you like. But I just love pink and gold together. So I love pink. We seem to end up with pink nail polish. I always think, I'll go in and I'll get something different today. But um, it's amazing actually how many different shades of pink there are because I go through a lot of them. Um, but of course, I don't know what I'm going to do soon because I won't be able to get my nails done. Problems of the... of the... Um, what do you call it? Of the... Um, 
Western world or something where you need to get where I need to get my nails done but um, yeah I will just have to see how it goes it's all worth it in the end isn't it to everyone to be healthy and safe okay so probably about right for me and that is still you can still see the gold coming up from there So you can see that gold still shimmering. That's just a lovely pink. I do really like pink and gold together, as I say. So I am now just going to pop that on there. So I did want a little bit of gold to be seen. So I didn't cut out the biggest rectangle square. I just did the next one down so that I would have a little bit more gold around now I will use a bit of tape because um, once again this is shiny so the glue sometimes uh, doesn't stick that well. So this is just the tear and tape, very easy. Oops. The easy part's getting it on and, and getting it off the off the reel, the oh, there's the moths. Look at that. There was a great big one in here. I sat down, turned the lights on, and this great big thing was flapping around. I thought, gosh, no, my luck, it'll land in my ink or something. But it seems to have gone. Okay. Just going to lift this. Just try to keep it reasonably close to the edge. Not that it really matters if it does come over because we will be adhering that to the white cardstock in the end. So even if it does come off a bit, it doesn't matter. There we go. So I hope everyone has been getting some crafting time and I do find it a really good place for me to get some me time. We have a, quite a few people in our bubble and I love just coming up here and shutting the door and and doing something with my crafting. It really is, I find for me personally, it really is good for <clears throat> my mental health. So I do want this just at a little bit of an angle. Make sure I've covered the hole up. There we are. Don't really want it to stick to there. Brilliant. Okay. So now I'll pop that to one side. Oh, there's that moth back. Pop that to one side and I'm going to show you about colouring in the flowers. Now, the one thing, um, one of the things that Jackie had picked up from Tammy, which was fantastic, is to stamp off the daisy, I'm chasing that moth around as you can see, stamp off the daisy instead of going directly with the first stamp to stamp it off, that just gives it that softer, softer, more delicate look. So I'll just stamp it off there and pop it in the middle. Now I wanted to, and I love colouring, I love colouring backgrounds, I love colouring stamps, etc. And I, I was looking up, oh, that's right, I was watching someone on um, YouTube and they were using their pencils. I thought, oh my gosh, I haven't had my pencils out for ages. So I thought I'm going to colour these flowers in with my pencils. So I've coloured these ones in already. So to let you know what colours I've used, for the centre, I've got Crushed Curry and Cajun Craze. So I've just gone around in a circle. And, oh, gosh, that moth. Kamikaze moth. And then I blended it in with the Crushed Curry. Okay, so that's that's those two. So then for the petals, I've used three colours. Uh, the darkest is Rich Razzleberry. 
I've got Flirty Flamingo and Calypso Coral. So what I did was I just went over, oh hello moth, I just went over lightly with the Flirty Flamingo. I know some people have their, some people have their cats and dogs. I have a moth. Mind you, one time I was trying to film a video and I had Eric the fly. He kept wanting to be in on the scene. He made a very loud buzzing noise. Very hard to get rid of things like that when you're in the middle of filming something, I must admit. Okay. So that's the pink, the flirty flamingo. And then I've got the rich razzleberry or razzleberry. Oh, there's that big one back again. Oh my goodness me. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just, I'm not um, just running it round or doing it block. I'm sort of going out as if it's like the flowers, the pattern of the flowers coming up from the middle. Um, and there are lines on the flower to give you a little bit of idea for the shading as well. And then just pop a little bit of dark bits in where you know that it probably would be darker, like around the center or where the leaves, leaves the petals overlap or the ones at the back. You know, they're probably going to be a little bit darker. And then I've just used the Calypso Coral just to run over the whole thing to blend it all together, really. I haven't gone all the way to the end in some of them. Just to give that little bit of a white. Now, I will be coming in with the white pencil as well just to blend those bits in as well. Just makes it a little bit smoother. These are watercolour pencils, so you can use them as pencils or as uh, watercolour, so you can lay the colour down and then go over with a um, aqua pen. I will be using the aqua pen in a moment just to also run over just to smooth it out, just very, very lightly. Um, I haven't used glimmer paper or anything like that, so uh, you don't, definitely don't want to put lay too much down because you'll get pulling and blotching of the paper because it's not made to be used with water, but you can just add a little bit of dampness and it just brings the colours together. So, sorry I didn't tell you what I was using then. That was Garden Green. And this is olive green, and this is granny apple green. So just the same really as when you're using um, the blends. Just picking three colors to blend together. So now I'm just, as I say, I'm not wanting, just want it very damp. And as you can see, that just runs those, softens up the colors and runs them together. Just don't squeeze, don't squeeze the pen. I'll just get a bit of that colour off. And leaf. Yeah, easy as that. So I did the three. And then um, just roughed up the edges. Now this is something that um, Jackie did. As well which I really liked. Um, I do like roughing up my edges as well and I just thought it did look really good. So I will rough these up as well. And the other thing that um, I'm going to show you that Jackie did was Oh, Helen said you can use a blender pen to soften it as well. A oh, good idea. Yeah, that's very true. 
probably better than um, the water pen, just in case you get a blotch. Now just rough up, not rough up, but just bend up the edges, just break some of the fibres in this paper, just to give it a bit of texture. So would that be the white, the white blender pen? Oh, or the blender pen that you pick up ink with, that blend pen, Helen. Okay, let's start putting some of this together. I'm now going to put some ribbon on. Okay, so I have decided to use Rococo Rose. I thought this was perfect. It's got the gold and the Rococo Rose in the ribbon. So I thought you couldn't have got a perfect, more perfect ribbon for this card. Okay. So I just want to put it on first before I put the flowers on, mainly because I don't want to push this down and then get it stuck to the paper. Ah, oh, yes, the blender pen in the pack of three. Yes, yes, perfect. Good idea. Thank you. I will do that next time. So I'm just going to put some tape on the back there. Actually, I probably don't need to put tape to be honest. I have got the tape from I have got the tape from popping this on. So as long as I've cut it, cut it long enough to reach, which I don't think I have. Uh, I'll just use that one. I'll use that one for the bow, so I won't waste it. And now I'm going to pop the this on with dimensionals and. Can't believe it. I just couldn't believe the fact that I'd run out of my white dimensionals. I thought I had buckets of it, buckets of them. I never run out and uh, lucky we've got the black ones. But yeah, it was a bit of a shock to find out I didn't have any. That's all right. These are just as good. Sometimes the black's quite good too because you can tell when you are taking the backings off which ones you've done of course which is hard sometimes with the white ones so this sweet is um, I've been having a really good play with it in the last couple of weeks and I just love it there's so many things you can have um, quite intricate cards or you can have just um, not simple cards, but you could, casual cards. So it really does lend itself to a lot of options. Now I'm just trying to aim for my pink square to be square. And hopefully that is square. So I'm just going to glue these on. So we will start with the outside one. So I'm just going to put glue down the middle. And about there. It's not too dark. It is a little bit dark down here this time, but I have to rearrange them again. It was a bit of a pain when the lamp fell over. Never mind. There's that moth again. It's determined to be in the shot, isn't it? Right. So we have got the sentiment, which should be nice and dry. So I'm just going to cut that out. So I don't mind just a rough rectangle at the moment or I also quite like 
um, I thought I'd cut this one out like this and then have a look. I've also got, that's a little bit further I think, one that I've cut out around the letters which I quite like that look as well. So let's have a look. So there's that one, just a rough sort of triangle or This one. Oops, just cut that. There we go. So I have got some mini white ones, so that's handy for putting on embellishments. I do like a bit of gold and a bit of bling. Right, now can I tie a bow with this small piece of ribbon? If not, I'm sure I can use it for something else. It's going to be a challenge, I think. So I will cut along the piece. It will not go to waste. But I don't want to waste your time by watching me struggle with a tiny bit on this occasion. So <clears throat> I'm just going to put it on with a glue dot actually today. So just play around with it until you're happy with how your bow looks. Holding the tails and pulling the bow at the same time. Brilliant, and I have got glue, do glue dots here. <clears throat> we seem to get half of them on the box, I must have missed. Oops, all stuck on my fingers, or I have got much better dealing with them though than I used to. I used to <laughs> get them everywhere, but I must admit. down. Do that one just a little bit more. Excellent. Isn't that beautiful, that ribbon? Just love it. Pink and gold. Okay. And then, oops, get rid of the scraps. My project is safe without some bling. Where did I put my, this. So I went with gold, these gorgeous gold embellishments in the Ornate Garden set. Because if I bought another pink in, it might not be quite the same pink. So I didn't wanna Bring in too many shades of pink. And then just in the centre and on the envelope, just stamped. Now this once again was something that I just had the flower, but um, Jackie had added the thanks and I thought that looked pretty good. So I will just show you what that looks like. So I had the flower. And just going to add thanks. And that is the card. Oops. I'll put that out afterwards. So I hope you enjoy. There are so many, as I say, different things you can do with this suite. I will just cover that ink pad. I can see that looming up at me. Uh, this, as I say, was the one that 
Jackie did yesterday and this was the one that I had already designed to do today but it is they are gorgeous um, stamps and embossing folders she's used the um, embossing folder from the suite as well it is just stunning so much in there for absolutely everyone so please do give it a go love to see your creations love to see what you do um, send them to me um, and enjoy your crafting I, as I say, I hope everyone is well. I hope everyone is um, managing to keep in touch with family and friends. Uh, take care and happy crafting. Bye.